stuff of songs. Tennessee is known for its whiskey, and now Leaper's Fork is bringing back the time-honored tradition of distilling the best part. It's all in the family. <laughs> Absolutely. Please meet Lee and Lindley Kennedy. Now, you said that this is the uh, the first operational distillery in Leaper's Fork in over 100 years? Yes, absolutely. So in Williamson County, we currently have two distilleries. We're which one, but uh, Leaper's Fork has not had a, a whiskey distillery since the late uh, 1800s. You don't say. Yeah, yeah. Legal, I said. Illegal, legal, exactly. <laughs> Side note. Now, you guys use this pre-prohibition kind of method. Sure. Pot so, filling, pot, right? Pot distillation. Pot distillation. Right. Okay. So you know we're we're trying to resurrect the lost art of small batch whiskey production that was brought to Tennessee many moons ago. So part of that is pot distillation, which creates a fuller, kind of richer whiskey at the other end. We're looking at photos of. Is mm -hmm. this happening? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, these are Cypress fermentation tanks that we're looking at. We try to use traditional equipment as well. That goes into the the pot distillation, but those are actually Louisiana cypress wood that we do all of our fermentation in. Yeah, yeah, and that's our, our pot still there, which was built in Louisville, Kentucky for us by Vendome Copper and Brass. No, yeah. no, I can smell it from here. I, know, I can smell it. I'm, I'm, I, I say we try some. Yeah, kind of, yeah, yeah absolutely. Do. Yeah, let's do it. Lindley, what are we trying? <laughs> well, with, this is our uh, Bottle and Bond Tennessee Whiskey. Mm -hmm. um, bottle and Bond is 100 proof, and so um, one thing we pride ourselves in at the distillery is that we do make everything from grain to glass. So we touch every bit of the aspect of from distilling to aging to bottling until you get it in your hands to drink at home. So yeah, so let's have, it. Let's have a shot. Let's get, yeah. okay, so show us the proper way. So the first thing you're gonna do is take his nose, and don't, don't bury your nose in it like you would a wine, but you're just trying to get the, the essence of the whiskey, mm -hmm. kind of breathe in through your mouth. Mm -hmm. And then obviously whiskey is an assault on the senses, so mm -hmm. small sips. Okay. <laughs> yeah. mm. And I know that Ooh, climate hey. and um, and location play into Absolutely. your product as yeah. well. Yeah. That is fantastic. Well, thank you. Thank Very you. Good. Yes. Um, what's the story about the log cabin? I've heard uh, some, yeah. some revelations about that. So uh, when we built the distillery, uh, we actually rebuilt an 1820s log cabin from Dixon County, Tennessee, that was from Van Leer. And so uh, a family friend of ours re, uh, schematic the logs, rebuilt it exactly like the original settler had it on our on his site from 1820. So it's, it's, a, it's a piece of Tennessee history that you know, we're, we're proud of it. It's like Lincoln it's, Logs, but in oh yeah. real life. <laughs> People come in and just look up at the ceiling and look around. And so, you know, everything yeah. that we have on that property, we brought there. And so it was just vacant land that Lee and I had yeah. from the late 90s. And, um, you know, it's, it's a great experience. And we like to say that the drive heading out is the start of the experience. And then you get to come see a beautiful... Beautiful horse farm. Um, yeah, surrounds, yeah, yeah, beautiful farms. And then our property is gorgeous. And you can see everything, how we do everything. And, and you meet everybody, obviously, at the distillery who are part of it. And it really is yes. family-owned business, oh, right? Yeah, yeah, we're completely family-owned. Mm -hmm. uh, my brother and I, my mom used to be. She's passed now. But uh, our tour guys do a great job. We do tours. Tuesday through Sunday, and we really try to educate people on the whiskey making process and the history as it relates to Tennessee, which we have a very rich history here as it revolves to whiskey in Tennessee. Because talk about that uh, uh, and why <laughs> Tennessee is so known for whiskey. Yeah. Why? why? Well, you know, cult uh, traditionally you think of Scotland, Ireland, Kentucky, and Tennessee as the four whiskey making regions. You've got other areas now, great whiskeys in Japan, but traditionally a lot of those Scottish Irish settlers. When they came to the New World, into the into this uh, America, they came over the Appalachians and had that distillation whiskey know-how, and so they used what they had at their disposal. But it's a lot of the same techniques as Scotland and Ireland. And I hear because of the weather here, because it's so volatile, yeah, absolutely right, that the barrels expand and contract, and that just adds to the flavor. It's a key to maturing a very balanced whiskey. So the cold temperatures we have in the winter, that whiskey sitting in the barrel and it's pushing into the grain of that wood. And in the summer, it's contracting out. So over the seasons and the years, that whiskey's moving in and out of the grain of that barrel and picking up caramels and vanillas, also oxidation, which is really mellowing that whiskey out. So we have our unique cult, our climate here, same way as Kentucky as well, benefits our, our aging process. I was gonna say, so does it make it more difficult to plan the flavoring process, if that makes sense? Because you're, I mean, you're based a lot on the on the climate. Yeah, we are, but you know, uh, just by doing things, you know, uh, consistency is the mark of a professional. So we do things A, B, C every single day. Um, and then, but every barrel is like a, I call it like a snowflake. It's like a person, so every barrel is different. It's how we treat that barrel at the end of its maturation time decides what we do with it, whether it goes into a small batch blend or it's a single barrel. So. 
It all, the, it's, it's very static, but then every barrel's different. That's so cool. Yeah. Now, right. Lindley, I know that this is family run, but it must be meaningful to you when you see families, couples come out and have a lovely time here. Oh, yeah, no, it's special. You know, that's one thing that Lee and I love about the place is, you know, when we started, or when he came in and said, you know, almost 12 years ago that he wanted to start a distillery, you know, now this we're seven years in now, and people come and they enjoy the place. And we love that it's a place that people come, they feel welcomed, they feel like they're a part of a family. You know, we're there walking around, our team knows, talks to everybody, and so it's definitely a family yeah, affair, family mm -hmm. it's a family bond. We love having locals out for just cocktails and a and listen to music. You don't have to come and take a tour. Yeah. You know, yeah. you don't want to do that every time. Mm -hmm. But um, you know, it's just a fun place for fun the atmosphere. community to come. Mm -hmm. And we love being involved with Downtown Franklin doing yeah. their festivals. And so um, we invite anybody just to come out and um, take the drive and come see us. Take the tour. Yes, yes yeah. exactly. Yes. We're going to meet you down there. Yes. Thank <laughs> you so much. You. Thank you. Thank you. This is Thank so, you. so Thank good. You. you have to grab a taste and share it with your friends, of course. Visit LeapersForkDistillery.com.